Hey guys, welcome to Wrench Drive. This is going to be a build video on this RGT Crusher clone. That's right, North American hobby type dude has cloned a Chinese crawler. That's right, it's going the other way now, guys. The uh, the good guys are cloning the bad guys. Bah ha ha ha. No, I'm kidding. The people on the ground, the boots on the ground in any particular country are not the bad guys. It is the government. It is the machine that is bad. And that's it for politics. I'm not anti-Chinese bodies, guys. I'm not anti-Chinese bits and bobs. As you will see by this crawler, because pretty much everything in it is a Chinese ripoff. So, how do we build yonder crawler? That is the question for today. How do you put this thing together? Now, obviously, it's pre-assembled here. I'm not going to show you in, uh, in nauseating detail. But I'm going to go through it step by step by step. So, this is how I built it. Roll bar. What you want to do first is uh, is um, is make your holes on the cab so that you can install the roll bar when you're done. So what you do is you line up the roll bar, and I did these two outside ones first because that makes it very very easy. So all you do is uh, is line it up, and then either make some marks because you can measure and make marks uh, you know the easy way, or if you're like me. You hold it up against the body and you drill through the through the roll cage holes with a little tiny drill bit and make your pilot holes and away you go. Then you drill out the holes to the larger size, then you attach the roll cage to the cab, then you drill your four more holes, two on the bottom, two on the top, and then you're ready when all said and done to match your roll cage to the body. Now take a step back, then you're going to assemble the back half. So there, oh, and this is all uh, M3 screws. I had two sizes. I ordered a, you know, kind of a bulk quantity, uh, M3 by 25 millimeter and M3 by 12 millimeter. So roughly one inch screws and half inch screws. And uh, I used uh, a couple of 25s and I'll try to point them out when I get to them and mostly 12s. So I ordered those many, many moons ago off of eBay, like 50 of them each, I think, something like that. Uh, and they were very affordable, decent quality. Unfortunately, the store that I ordered from no longer exists. It's a bit of an adventure getting hardware, guys. And the problem in North America, screws are bloody expensive. So you definitely want to shop around a little bit if you're a hobby type person and catch yourself some screws. Now, I printed all these parts out of TPU. The nice thing about TPU is you can use a plastic welding pen like this, El Cheapo, and you can weld the pieces together instead of using screws. And what I typically do, if, I'm, if it's something I'm even remotely worried about the strength, I'll use like a piece of paper clip, stick it in, in as, a, as like a, as a, I don't know, just more strength, and then, uh, and then I'll weld it and then uh, the paper clip will add a little strength or some welding wire or whatever a piece of wire to give it a little more strength in this uh, there's a couple of spots that i had to fix up like for example right here i think you can see i'll zoom in on it a little bit that was about 10 millimeters short so i added uh, i used the screw to give it some strength that's a 25 millimeter screw and then i added a whole bunch of plastic with the pen to, uh, to fill it in and that this has not been uh, prettied up in any way that's just how it turned out uh, with a little grinding it'll look much nicer um, up top here I made a boo-boo on my prototype I had the posts outside here and it's a little bit too wide you can't actually mount it from there so I moved them into the middle and uh, I just cut off the uh, the posts 3d welded them on there or I welded them on there and ran screws through uh, pretty painless so if I can make this work with my prototype, I think you guys can make it work with the improved version that I post on Thingiverse, if you get where I'm coming from here. So we got the holes. We got this so that we can mount it to the body. Next step, attaching the side pieces. One screw in the bottom, one screw in the top. And I'm trying to remember. Yeah, they both come from the back side. I had set this up initially so that you could put a long screw through. That's why there's a like a, a visible screw spot there. I probably will leave that. We'll see. I have to see where it is in the model. It might not be so easy to get rid of. 
Uh, these crossbars for the tire, this accommodates a 120 millimeter tire, no problem. As you can see, these crossbars, you add them when you're done, uh, 12 millimeter screws. Then you screw the back piece on. I used, uh, oops, then you screw the back piece on. I used long screws. The, uh, the tail bar has uh, loops that go around the, uh, the back bar in this uh, LCG chassis. I'm going to do up another version of this that works with a, uh, with a I guess I'm going to call it a standard bumper mount uh, that I've used in the past. Uh, these are long screws up here, 25 millimeters, to give it a little bit more strength, but this is a pretty sturdy part. Uh, so 25s, 25s, uh, you sh no, this will be 25 because it's got to go in uh, from the outside. Uh, blah, 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 what else? So sides, these, these bad boys. And then the last but not least, you'll see down here there's a brace in the chassis. Try and get a better shot here. So down here there's a brace. Hard to see. I'll put a picture in here. So there's a brace. This crossbar, all I did, because I was not 100% sure where that was going to go, I installed the body, set it up the way I wanted it, put the cross brace where I wanted it, laid this piece over top, it's got nice little uh, rounded uh, ends that, that wrap around this uh, this uh, this sidebar really nicely. And all I did was I, I made a couple of holes right where I needed them and ran in a couple of 12 millimeter screws. Now I'm torn. I can easily measure this now that I've got it installed and, and put some holes along this side so that you guys don't have to drill holes. And I probably will do that. Yeah, you know what? I'll, what I'll do is I'll make one with the holes and I'll make one without the holes because holes tend to weaken things, so I didn't want to do a whole bunch of holes down the side of this thing. Now that I talk about it out loud, I think I will put those holes in because it makes it easier to build. And then if you want to use the one that does not have holes, by far the most handy-dandy tool when you're uh, trying to deal with TPU is a milling bit. So it's not a drill bit. It's got like a cutter on the front. I don't know if you've seen these before, but uh, Google milling bit and you'll see exactly what we're dealing with. I got a cheap set and because you're dealing with plastic, cheap is, is going to work just fine. I've had them for ages. Works great. Much more effective at drilling holes in TPU than a drill bit is because TPU, it's, uh, it, it doesn't cut very well. So um, to me, definitely worth investing in a rotary tool and some milling bits if you need to do some surgery. The other nice thing, these sanding drums work super, super well. Uh, these two tools, one of them's a uh, top shack, one of them's a tack life. The tack life has a little more oomph to it. That's a uh, Amazon brand. Top, top shack is a Banggood brand. I've had these apart. They are identical, like literally identical. The only difference, the circuit board is slightly different. And uh, for some reason, like I said, the tack life actually has a little more torque. The top shack is a little less torquey. Um, same motor, I honestly couldn't tell you why. Motor, bearings, little circuit board, battery. When I bought this initially, this Tack Life, it was about 20 bucks. They're about 50 bucks now, 40 to 50. They have gone up a ton. So if you see one under 30, I would say jump on it. Uh, Banggood also has gotten more pricey. Uh, this I got for like 15 uh, on sale. Totally worth it. Uh, for real money, it's debatable whether or not it's worth it. Like there's there's a price where ten bucks worth of parts is is ridiculously overpriced. So take that for what you will. Super handy tools. The 3D printing pen lets you fix all manner of blasphemy. A drill for drilling holes, drill bits. Um, let's see what else. Is there anything else I used? I don't think so. Yeah. So that'll get you there, my friends. That will get you there. Uh, the other thing that is handy is uh, you can see a couple of them there. There's uh, that little orange nut. I make plastic nuts all the time, and I will try to remember to uh, copy some of those files over to this project so that you don't have to go looking for them. Uh, they're easy to make. You just make a hexagon and you poke a hole in it. You can use pretty much any uh, 3D app to, to get that done if there's something that I have not made available that you want to do. Uh, nuts and washers. 
for the for the RC hobby, plastic nuts and washers work great. Especially TPU, it's 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 quite durable. And uh, TPU, I forgot to mention. I was going to mention this. The downside to TPU is that it does not cut threads very well. So when you thread a screw in, the screw does not make its own threads. But the upside to that, you make a tight hole, and it's like a friction fit, uh, quite durable. And and I haven't had stuff come apart. It, it works really well. The only problem you ever have is if the hole is not tight enough. If the hole is not tight enough, then you got a problem. If the hole's nice and tight. Yeah, you know where I'm going with that. Yes, tight hole is good in TPU. So that's something to mention, actually. If you print this out in PLA, you might need to drill the holes because I made them for uh, for to use with uh, M3 TPU, uh, M3 screws printed out of TPU. So if you if you go with something else, uh, you might have some problems. I usually try to do holes that are on the small side. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember now, guys. Uh, if you go with M2.5 screws, you might have a problem. These holes might be too big. Um, be warned. Print a test part, probably the smallest part in here. I guess probably this back piece. Maybe one of these guys, uh, one of these crossbars, and then uh, check the hole. If you uh, if you are uh, not inclined to measure it in a 3D app of some sort. Okay, so that's the back half. Uh, basically, it's the roll bar uh, sides. Um, I don't think they have to be mirrored, but on general principle, I always try to mirror parts that are uh, mirror images of each other. Uh, two of these crossbars, the uh, the back hoop. The uh, back brace, and there should be two versions of this. Like I said, one for the LCG chassis that has the uh, the uh, cross, the crossbar, and one for some somebody who wants to use uh, something like my old uh, 3D printed bumper mounts. And you need the uh, if you want it mounted really solid, you want to get the uh, the cross brace and the uh, and the uh, the body mount. And this this is very very solid. As you can see, it's a little bit of a snug fit, which is what you want. Uh, rotates up nicely, uh, sits down. You just make sure it sits on that on that post, and then the body is very solid. I need to add a clip to the front. I've not figured out exactly how I'm going to do that yet. Um, I was initially going to use body posts, and I changed my mind because this body is so nice and clean. I thought uh, there's got to be a better way. Now I just have to figure out what it is. I think I'm going to make an insert, like a piece that goes on the back side of the grill on the body like just a square frame of some sort, glue that to the inside of the body to add some uh, some toughness. Because my only concern is that uh, is that this part of the body up here, this is probably the weakest part, right? I made a cutout uh, to sit the height I wanted over top of the, uh, the bumper posts. Uh, so to strengthen this up a little bit, I think I'm going to make an insert to put in here, glue it on, and then uh, just add a clip at the bottom. Uh, like a like a little um, I got a couple ideas we'll see what I end up doing anyways some method of latching at the bottom so that it's latched and it sits on the bumper posts firmly uh, like this body right now it's got a little bit of flex just because of the TPU but this sits quite firmly like it it basically is is solid like you can you can drive this around for sure the way it is right now not a huge problem the only time you're going to have an issue, like if you're jumping or you're rolling down a hill or something, the beating that this, the, the, the amount of load that this little piece down here is going to have to absorb getting whacked against those bumper posts, not ideal, right? So that's the one last thing I want to do a little tweaking. If you're very gentle with your cars, probably nothing to worry about. Uh, then we have the, uh, the headlights. These are... Uh, these are uh, two or three piece jobbies depending on what you do. As you can see, I put stickers on the inside. They also accommodate LEDs. Uh, so there's the bucket. Uh, there's, uh, I think I'm calling it the lens part. I made a little grill that goes over the outside to kind of look like a military style headlight. Uh, it doesn't look that great. I will post it, but I didn't really like it. So, so it's not on there. And then there's two little, um, almost like a washer, an upper one and a lower one. I glued these in place with uh, with B7000, and uh, they're pretty solid. Um, I didn't want it to be super permanent, and B7000 you can peel off relatively easily. Um, so one ring goes the top, one ring goes on the bottom, and and it's it's a kind of a sandwich that holds the headlight in place. 
um, and there's a hole down the shaft where you can uh, put wires for LEDs. So you can definitely put LEDs into these. I have not, I'm not the hugest fan of LEDs. The mirrors are handy dandy little jobbies that fold. This one's a little crooked. I mounted it a little goofy mistake on my part. These are three piece. You glue the, uh, the mirror part to the, po to the, uh, to the post and then the body or the, uh, sorry, the, uh, the hinge part just attaches to the body. And I tried something different. There's going to be a post. You drill a hole, you stick the post through uh, a little dab of glue. If it's loose windshield wipers, same deal, little hole. Uh, I made a long post on these. You just trim them to size. They sit nice against the windows. They're not super fancy. I think they look pretty good. You can tell me what you think. I'm going to paint them a little bit. I'm going to make the uh, the bars chromy, well, aluminum colored. Same with these guys. Add a little bit of paint, spiff them up a little bit. What else is there to say? Oh, I'm going to make some door handles. Um, I have some. I haven't printed them yet, and I don't really like them. At least the model I don't really like. I want to see what they look like in, in real life before I commit. I uh, just haven't quite got to that yet. Uh, oh, bumper. I actually like this, uh, this simple bumper. I had it kicking around. It's one of my old ones. It's been around forever. Fits really nice, as you can see. Like I think it lines up with the body pretty darn well. Only downside, this is made out of PLA, and eventually PLA bumpers do break. This one has survived... Uh, yeah, at least some use. Not too much scuffage on there, so it's hard to say exactly how much. I can't remember what I've used this on in the past, but we shall see. The big concern is that the posts on the mount back here, those posts are PLA, which is uh, not ideal. If anything's going to break, that's what's going to break. So hopefully I've covered it all. You need some M3 screws. You need some 3D printed... Uh, some 3D printed nuts. Oh, that's what I was going to show you. Let's see if I can do it. Unfortunately, this is put together. So inside, you can see that there's screws on the, uh, the bottom. And then up top, I use nuts. Up top, it's a little bit more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you can mess with the body a little bit. I wanted to use these nuts. I just uh, I pre-threaded them and then threaded them on by hand uh, so as to be gentle. These screws are quite tight um, and it's in the corner so they don't sit super flat. You got to be a little bit careful. These ones down on the bottom, no problem at all. Uh, and they have little uh, TPU washers uh, to hopefully uh, add a little strength, make it because this is a, a weak spot on the body. And that's about it. So pretty easy to put together easy to print. TPU is very, very durable in my experience. Um, I've got plenty of uh, cages kicking around that are made out of PLA uh, that have held up quite well, but TPU much more durable. The only problem I've had with TPU is I broke some parts um, spring. Where I live, spring is still typically below zero. So it was about minus five out. Or was it? Anyways, in that minus five to plus five range, I was doing a fair bit of running this spring, and I actually had some problems with TPU parts breaking uh, much easier than I thought they would. That's why it's noteworthy. So stronger than PLA, weaker than, uh, than your typical nylon RC car parts, but most notably, a lot weaker than TPU typically is in my experience. So in the summer, like good luck breaking TPU, it's very, very durable. Well, it got quite brittle at what I would say is not a super low temperature. I was a little bit surprised and I'm not 100% sure. I got to do a little bit of testing at some point. It might have been that I printed those parts at a little bit too high of a temperature. The TPU was crystallized or just starting to get crystallized and I lost strength or flexibility or I lost flexibility, I guess is the right word, and it became brittle. That's my guess, uh, because like I said, it typically, I have not had TPU break that easily in, you know, minus five is not that cold. It's chilly. It's not that cold. That's Celsius. So I was a little bit surprised. Now it might be the brand of TPU. There's quite a few factors at play here. The hits that broke parts were not nothing, but as I said, surprising.
So take that for what you will. Um, overall, if you're running your crawler uh, with these parts printed out of TPU, it's going to be pretty durable, my friends. Um, you're going to have to do something pretty nasty to break it. And uh, these windshield wipers, uh, for example, I just made the holes a hair on the tight side and I didn't even glue them. Uh, that way, if anything, hopefully they just get ripped off and you just, if you roll over and you just pop them back on because TPU is durable, like I said. Um, I don't know. There's many ways to uh, to accomplish these uh, these types of deals, right? Do what you want. Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention, guys, I am not the most anal retentive person when it comes to realism. So pretty much anybody that's into making a crawler realistic can do a better job than I did. This is this is the level of of commitment that I'm I'm typically interested in. I like making it. I like the 80% getting you there. And then, you know, everything else is a bonus. You can make this look much, much better. Um, you can you can glue smooth the, the plastic um, with, uh, I use white glue. And um, the only downside, again, depending on how much you're going to abuse it, it, it greatly affects the durability. If you're trying to make something like this look super real, I'm guessing you don't want to beat the ever-loving crap out of it. So... You know, there are lots of ways to get where you want to go. That's the bottom line. All right, so let's go through the mechanicals of this bad boy a little bit real quick for anybody that did not see the video on this uh, particular chassis. So this is the Enjora TRX4 compatible LCG chassis. Highly recommended, my friends. Highly recommended. So, carbon fiber rails, links, uh, metal uh, outer plates, metal transmission uh, center plate, uh, carbon fiber motor mount, uh, carbon fiber battery mount. Really nice kit. $85 Canadian. Totally worth it. Uh, quality of the kit in my case was excellent. I did a review of these LCG chassis uh, where I go through the details, so have a look at that if you're interested. Uh, Injora Mountain Shocks. These are super nice shocks, my friends. They are uh, build. Injora builds these as the smoothest shocks they've ever made. I will 100% vouch for that. They work great. Uh, this is not an Injora motor. I believe, if memory serves, this is a SurePass Hobby 3100 kV motor. Um, I made this to go uh, kind of fast, hence the TPU, uh, the TPU back half, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it is fast. It'll, it does 20 miles an hour, no problem. Running a Hobbywing 10, 6, 10, 10 BL120 ESC, so 120 amp ESC. Um, it's got crawler functions, so drag, brake, uh, front, back, uh, like a crawler style uh, drive mode. Works really well. Not perfect. You know, this motor's a little high KV, so even with the Traxxas 2-speed, the um, the control is a little bit, uh, maybe not as good as you would like uh, for some people's liking, but that's a 3100 KV motor. It's a lot of KVs. It's pretty good. It is, it's not terrible, and there'll be a running video of this coming soon. These are actually stock Traxxas axles, but the Injora TRX4 clone axles are awesome. I would highly recommend them. Right now, they only have the fully locked ones. Uh, I have a set of the ones with the, uh, the, the diff lockers. They're perfect. I've had no problems. I've had them for over a year. They're good. I've had zero problems with them. Uh, if you check out uh, XOKHRC, he absolutely beats the crap out of the Injora TRX4 clone crawler chassis, and it takes an absolute kicking. So... Way back when I reviewed the axles, uh, my take was, are they going to be as durable as the Traxxas ones? Hard to imagine. I would say, if anything, they might be tougher. They are not to be, uh, they're not to be overly criticized, in my opinion. They, they look, they're pretty awesome. These are stock Traxxas ones. Uh, now, despite there still being a cable here, uh, I'm running a solid spool in the back with the Enjora gear reduction, so I'm a little bit overdriven on the front to give a better turning. 
blah, 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 cheapo aluminum wheels, Enjora Super Swamper tires, Enjora back drive shaft, Traxxas front drive shaft. I wanted to check and see which one's more durable, so if one breaks before the other, well, then we'll know. I personally have never broken one of the Traxxas ones, so as far as I'm concerned, those plastic drive shafts are just fine. Traxxas two speed transmission. The one thing Enjora has never made available is their two-speed transmission by itself. I suspect that's a supply chain thing because it's a relatively new uh, product that they've brought along and they made it available in their kit. The COVID came along, blah, 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 screwed up the world. At some point, I'm sure you're going to see the Enjora two-speed transmission available. That is noteworthy because the Enjora transmission has plastic gears inside. I'm going by somebody who had bought it, reviewed it, blah, blah, blah. I expected it to not be as durable as the Traxxas one. But if you go watch the Exo Caged Enjora TRX4 clone chassis review, he beats the crap out of it. And that transmission holds up just fine. I'm trying to remember what he broke first. I think he broke an axle housing first. Um, and after an absolute, like, worst things than I've ever done to a crawler. So he beat the crap out of it. Transmission held up just fine. So, when that Enjora transmission is available, I would say you definitely can go with that. Now, if you're on a budget, uh, Jenny's RC, you can buy Traxxas axles, Traxxas transmission, all the Traxxas parts you want. Uh, they've gone up in price quite a bit lately. I would highly recommend going with the Enjora axles because they're, they're a much better better bang for your buck. Transmission wise, if you don't want to spend about 65 Canadian, 50 US on a Traxxas transmission, you can use an SCX10 style transmission with this flat motor mount relatively easily, or sorry, uh, cross member. I'll show you here in a second. The cross member that comes with the, uh, the TRX4 kit is nice because it's flat. So you can imagine that to modify this so that you can use an SCX10 type transmission is not going to be super difficult. Okay, you're going to have to do surgery. It's never going to be the same, but you can get there. Uh, the other thing you could do is you could 3D print yourself a cross member to accommodate the SCX10 2 style cheapo transmission. So definitely the fact that that transmission is not super readily available right now is not a showstopper. Now, the reason I go through all this is that when all is said and done, what you end up with is a chassis that is on par with pretty much anything you can buy. And the, the RGT Crusher that this is, a, this is a, a ripoff of, the Crusher has straight axles, so these are portal axles. So depending on what you're trying to do, that's an upgrade. Shocks, very, very nice. Uh, Two-speed transmission, the, uh, the Crusher has a has a has a, a really sweet setup it's got the the uh the divorce transfer case so it's got the engine up front transmission transfer case and then drive shafts well that's awesome i'm totally into it the only problem is if you're if you're like me and you live someplace where you cannot easily get rgt parts well what are you going to do if that transmission breaks then you got a problem so if you go with something like this well, this is all Traxxas clone. Traxxas parts are probably among the most widely available parts you can get. Uh, at least, you know, if you're if you're a Western world type of person. I have no idea what it's like in China, but there are definitely people in China running Traxxas cars, so whatever. So the RGT cars, awesome. Like, I co highly covet them. The only thing that's kept me from buying them is that they are on par with Traxxas pricing if you live in Canada. So if I order an RGT car, it's going to cost me as much as a TRX4. Sometimes more. That's a lot of money. That's like $700 Canadian, right? Well, this car all in is that same price range, but it's all Traxxas compatible. So I can get parts super, super easily, right? And obviously the more savvy you are, like I have no concerns that I could fix an RGT crawler. That's not my concern. I know I can. How much is it going to cost me? Right? Because as soon as you start having to buy the whole transmission setup, the whole, you know, you have to buy more stuff to fix it. You can't just buy one gear. 
or a set of gears, whatever. Like you can't get to little bits and bobs. You got to spend a hundred bucks basically if the transmission dies. Uh, the axles, um, pretty much when you're dealing with crawlers, you know, you can, you can pop in a set of axles, uh, a different brand uh, of axles relatively easily most of the time. So that's not a showstopper. From what I've seen, the RGT stuff is good. The axles are good. The transmission's good. It's purely a case of what if I get a dud, right? So if you live someplace where you, you know, you like the RGT stuff, but you can't get parts for it and whatnot, well, you can build yourself a clone relatively easily. And this, uh, this AJRC body is really nice. If you, if you get into 3D printing, you can make all kinds of stuff. And obviously, I'm not saying you have to. It's just, it's a lot of fun makes the hobby even that much more of a step up so all in similar pricing if anything this is better than the rgt crusher uh, their new version i think it's the challenger has the portal axles two speed uh, still a divorced uh, gearbox or a divorced engine and transfer case which is a very realistic uh, type setup you can put a a, uh, a simulated motor cover on your mo on on the motor and make it look really cool. The Challenger has a proper box on top of a tube chassis, which is what I might do with uh, with body number two. Very cool. Uh, so the Challenger is a massive upgrade over the Crusher. The Crusher straight axles, Challenger portal axles. Again, if you live someplace like Canada where it's hard to come by this stuff and parts are not easy to get, you can do your own. That's what we're shooting for here. So you can be the judge. I call this a massive win. I'm very pleased with it. I think it turned out really good. I still got some details to do. I'm going to paint the uh, running boards black. I think I'm going to do the grill black. I'm going to add some uh, some undercoating to toughen up the, uh, the vulnerable parts because I want this thing to last. Again, this setup is, uh, is good for about 20 miles an hour in high speed and uh, probably uh, closer to 10 than, than 6 in low speed. So it's, uh, it's going to take a bit, of a, a bit more of a beating just because of the speed. Uh, with the center of gravity lowered a little bit more, even than the Traxxas, it does uh, handle quite nicely. Uh, so in terms of, uh, of driving a crawler quickly, it works quite nicely, very well. Hopefully that is uh, useful to you, my friends. That is it. That is it. We have gotten carried away. That's it for this edition of Wrench to Drive, where we ask the eternal question, do you drive to wrench or do you wrench to drive? See you next time.